Hey, this is Pastor Ryan. Thanks for joining us for this week's Sunday Preview. This week's passage is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1-6. through 6. First, we want to put the passage in its larger context. We have three sections in 1 Peter. The salvation of the believer, the submission of the believer, and the suffering of the believer. This covers how we gain our holiness, how we live in harmony with the world around us, and how we need to live in humility with each other. Let's get right to the passage. Verse 1 starts off with the word, therefore. This is pointing back to the prior context. Peter is encouraging us to have the same mindset as Christ. Christ suffered in the flesh, and we are called to suffer in the flesh. He uses a word picture that we should arm ourselves with the same way of thinking, and he applies it universally as he says, whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, pointing out how those who have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. He says what this new status is going to allow us to do. We are to live for the rest of the time, pointing to our time going forward. This is talking about the rest of the time we have in the flesh. And there's a clear contrast, only two paths. Peter is saying we can no longer live for human passions, but for the will of God. Human passions should belong to our past, while living for the will of God should be a path in the future. As he clarifies this contrast, he gives a reason saying the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do. He describes their pursuit of sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. Then he wants to help his readers understand how this might play out in interpersonal relationships, saying, with respect to this, that is, you living according to the will of God, he describes their reaction, saying they are surprised when you do not join them He summarizes the previous six worldly activities as a flood of debauchery. This is contrasted with activities designed to pursue the will of God. What they end up doing is maligning you, not because you actively condemn them, but because you don't actively join them. But there's a contrast. They might be judging you right now, but they will give an account, for they will answer for their activities. To him, presumably here being Christ, described as being ready to judge something coming in the future, Two categories of people, the living and the dead, covering everyone. Peter then describes the importance of the gospel, saying this judgment is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead, providing three contrasts, though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. Before we go, we want to look at three themes in the text. The first theme is time. We see Peter telling us how to live for the rest of the time we have in the flesh here on earth contrasting that with the time we've lived in the past, because in the future, they will give an account. They will be judged. Our interaction with time seems to be a large component of this passage. The second is ongoing contrast between human passions and the will of God. Peter doesn't seem to have a middle road or a moral gray area. And finally, there are a couple of difficult spots in the text. First, Peter says that whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. What does this mean for the believer? Is Peter saying believers are able to completely cease from sin? And secondly, Peter says the gospel was preached even to those who are dead. Did those in the early church preach to dead people? How are we to understand this phrase? Thanks for joining us for the Sunday preview. We hope this spurs on your thinking and prepares you for our time together on Sunday morning. God's blessings on your week.